Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, your usual host, Kevin. And today I have I have the pleasure of introducing you and talking with someone who I just described as having a sunny disposition, which as I, I hear myself say it again, it's like, geez, Kevin, you've just you're getting cornier and cheesier in your old age. But it's like, ah, I'm embracing it. When you like somebody, you like somebody. And when it's when it's immediate, when it's clear, it's immediate, it's clear, embrace it, go with it. Stephen Pemberton is just a delightful human being in the, in the seven minutes I've known him. And I'm excited to share him with you today and get to know him a little bit better. To introduce you a little bit to Stephen, he and his wife built two seven-figure e-commerce businesses. And today they use the skills they learned in both of their businesses to run a virtual events company called Holoco. Whether it's a coach, consultant, or author, virtual events have helped business owners exponentially increase their reach, generating more impact and increasing their sales. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today with Steven, talk about how he got to start, everything in between. We're going to try and keep it to 15 to 20 minutes like usual. We'll probably fail in the best way possible, but I promise it won't be more than 25 <laughs> as my eyes dart up and down from the Zoom clock to Steven. Steven, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing with me. And I'm just delighted to meet you, clearly. <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to see where this conversation goes. Well, let's, let's go back to begin with, back to the beginning. Not the beginning, beginning. We don't have to go back to the beginning of time or it's like in the womb or whatever. <laughs> let's go back to the beginning of your, your, your start as a coach. How did you, and I'd like to try to like leave this a little bit open-ended whilst being mm -hmm. still kind of specific. How did you get your, how did you discover your, your superhero powers as a coach? Like, how did you realize that coaching was something that maybe you were already doing and didn't have the right word for? maybe something that you uh, wanted to do, maybe you found that it was the best way to have the kind of impact you wanted to have or the influence you wanted to have or create the kind of change you wanted to see. How did you realize that coaching was for you and discover your your coaching superpowers? That's a great question. I think that for me, it feels almost more like a villain origin story though, because <laughs> the the way that it went, if in just really short recap was, I got married very young. I got married at 20 years old. My wife was 19. We had our son six months later, and then we decided she didn't want to go back to work. So I was trying to support the household, making $13 an hour. And then I watched her grow her social media following from zero to 10,000 followers on Instagram. She starts bringing home $500 a month. And that was the first time I'd ever seen anyone do that in my family. And I went, wait, you can make money while you're at home. I don't have to go break my body to make money. And so I said, hey, you know what's better than just you doing it? How about I do it too? And so I quit my job. I had no skills. We had no money and <laughs> rent was 750. The very next month we had 500 bucks. So you can kind of do the math that it did not go very well. So we ended up losing everything, having to move into a basement and mm -hmm. in the basement is basically in that dark place. And that secret place is where my villain origin story kind of began. Mm -hmm. It feels like, because in that place, I just remember walking through depression and feeling as if I was a failure for for almost putting my family in this position. Mm -hmm. And I saw the, the family that took us in, they didn't have the money to take us in. So mm -hmm. I'm having to work odd jobs to pay rent and to have food. And it gets to the point where I feel so low that I don't even go upstairs because we're living in this basement. I don't go upstairs and eat. What I end up doing is my mom gifted me a box of this huge family pack box of the Nature Valley Crunch Bars. You know, the ones that are really, they just have tons of crumbs anytime you open them. Mm -hmm. That was my lunch and dinner and I didn't eat breakfast. And that's what I would live on. I lived on that for over a month. And I just remember after that time, I ended up going into corporate and corporate which was, I, it's, I use that terminology very loosely because I was a, I worked in a warehouse and I was working 14 to 21 hours a day and six, five to six days a week. It was insane body breaking, mind breaking activity. But that was where I realized that there was more for me than just what I thought the, the basically the mental limitations I'd put on myself. I realized hmm. that when you have to do something, you can actually push through your mental limitations and there's a greater version of you on the other side of that. So as I realized that in short order, I started flying up the, the food chain pretty quickly. I went hmm. from entry level employee to management within a year, within another year and a half, moved up to mid management. And in that mid management role, because I had remembered my origin story of being in the basement is I was taking people under my wing and I wanted to take care of my team differently. Mm. I didn't mm. like looking at them as KPIs. I didn't like looking at them as just driving the top line or how to decrease the bottom line. I wanted to treat people like people. 
And during that time and place is where I've really built a lot of those skills that I use today, even in the company we have now. And in 2019, I watched my wife start a business. Well, 2018, she started. And by 2019, she had grown it on Amazon from zero to a million dollars top line sales with six employees, but the the margins were terrible. So the margins <laughs> were about 10%. So we had a partner in that business as well. So you split that two ways. Plus you had to keep some money for cash reserves. There was not much. I was making more working that corporate job. <laughs> so because I was in logistics and supply chain and over warehousing, it seemed like a match made in heaven to quit <laughs> that job, to come home, to do the e-commerce route. Two months later, basically another part of that story is Amazon shuts us down because of a supplier that we were using. Had paperwork, <sighs> not the right paperwork. Ah. And I know, right? And yeah. so a couple months after that, we were pretty much in this, almost in the same position that we were when I was 20. And we were about to be out of, how, out of the house again, out of food again, out of money again. And we were blessed enough to be able to pivot into Facebook, Instagram, and Shopify. And we were able to, within very short order but within a year to take that from zero to a million and the most important part was we were able to help 170 underprivileged kids have christmas by either going and finding them in the school system of tennessee or in the backwoods of tennessee buying all the presents wrapping all the presents delivering all the presents we were saying in these little elves and that was when at that time and place was when we realized that there was more for us than that so instead of just selling people home goods which is what we sold it, doing our e-commerce journey we had started a mastermind and during that mastermind, we had started helping people with e-commerce, but it wasn't getting the results that we wanted. So we just shut it down and we wanted to revamp it to make it better. And during that time and place, we had people coming to us who didn't know how to do, how to do funnels, how to do marketing, how to do the things that we knew how to do. And they wanted to run events. So that's kind of how that business started. And that's where I truly, that plus we do e-commerce consulting where it's very similar to what you were saying with coaching people. For me, it's not just about how do we drive more sales? It's how do I take care of this person as a person? Mm -hmm. With that being said, is a, a large part of that is financial. How can I help them achieve their dreams? What does their dream look like? Even with our mastermind is what does their dream look like? Some people just wanted to be able to pay for a dinner. Other people mm -hmm. wanted to be able to change their entire lives. They wanted that to be their full-time thing. So being able to cater things to those people and who they are as people is really what drives me to look at them, not just as another sale, another number, but as people with real lives, with real dreams, and how can I help them achieve their dreams? Man, your, I mean, your story has it all, essentially. <laughs> like, seriously, like there's so, there's so many different like core core values that I find to be so intrinsic to like good coaching and just good, like just human relationships and development and just growth that I, I, the first thing I want to like identify is I love the fact that you saw really, really, really early that you wanted your life to be different and you saw how that could happen and you went after it and you failed spectacularly. <laughs> it really did. And like, obviously mm -hmm. now we have, we have the, the grace and the illumination of hindsight to kind of show us the path that we were on. And obviously in the moment, it doesn't feel all that good to have gone after something and find yourself at the bottom of a well, but mm -hmm. you went for it, missed, picked yourself back up slowly, but surely with help, with help from people who, who were positioned to help, even if it you know was painful or they barely had the resources to help you, they had help, got back up and still had it in your head, what the life you wanted to live looked like how you wanted your family's needs met you're your, you know caring for yourself caring for your family your loved ones your responsibilities kept going after it found different paths that maybe weren't certainly didn't feel quite like the right path but embracing it getting the most out of it and then immediately like i love the way that you once you began to meet the needs and requirements of you and your family you're imme immediately your brain is like, I can also, I don't want my people to be KPIs. I don't want the people that I work with and for and work for me, who I'm responsible for, to just feel like numbers or to feel like cogs in a machine, even though when you're mm -hmm. in any kind of corporate environment, that's very much what corporate as like, and I don't want to assign any like personality to it, but like, that's very much that machine always wants to make you into a machine part, <laughs> yep. just as a natural expression and pushing back against that. And being able to make progress in that and learning the skills, how what it takes to actually have an impact on people and to lift people up and to bring them in and to like help them to fly and make their own leaps in the future. And I just loved like the evolution of it, the way you tell your story and how like at each stage you were finding the way forward and you had varying degrees of success or failure or both and learned from both 
the success and the failure and just kept going and kept iterating. And the moment you got success, your immediate reflex, I only, it sounds like a reflex to me was to like, I have, how do I, how do I give back? How do I, how do I help? How do I serve more differently and better and just keep growing and changing? And I just love at so many different like key notes on the, I say key, <laughs> the word keynote comes out of my mouth. Like I could hear you giving a Ted talk on this for like, you know, 45 minutes, just like telling your story and all the lessons learned along the way. But at all these different key positions, it's you're still the same person I could see, like that person who wants to provide for themselves, provide for their family and grow and change and evolve and have success and create impact and share all of that with other people and just keep, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, wash, rinse, repeat over and over again. And it's like found something that could really help help you to have the kind of influence and like affect the kind of change you want to see in the world. I'm just, I'm, I know I'm basically just blowing smoke up your butt because I love, I love your story. And also the way you tell it, like, it's really, you can see the journey and the will to move forward, especially again, using hindsight to help illuminate some of the darker valleys of that journey mm -hmm. can really help people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative of you sharing it too, because it can really help people to realize like, you know, you might be, you know, in the basement, you might be at the bottom of the well, you might be in the, you know, the, the, in the valley, so to speak. Yes. It's like, it's, and you don't have to feel you don't have to feel the sun on your face to know that it will shine again. And it, mm -hmm. it really helps to hear stories like that. I think, I think for people who are on their own, their own journeys. I uh, thank you for everything you said. First yeah. and foremost, I want to appreciate everything that you said. And I want to reiterate a couple of things. One, for those of you listening is you may be walking through a season and don't know why you're in that season. You don't know how that season's going to play out, but you typically don't know the reason for that season until you get out of mm -hmm. it. The mm -hmm. same thing that you were just saying, you typically, for me, I can look back and realize and understand each iteration and why it happened. But when you're in the middle of it, you don't get it until <laughs> afterwards. It's hindsight, right? And mm -hmm. the other thing I want to say is I love how you were talking about what you feel I am as far as how the person that I am. The reason mm -hmm. why I do what I do, the reason why I'm on this podcast with you and for those of you listening is because I truly want to give back. I truly want to give back my time, my experiences, my story. I do my best to keep nothing off the table, especially the bad, just because I can get on here and just talk about my success, but it's not going to serve you. But if I get on here and I talk about the journey and the things that where I fell fa face first and I was able to pick myself back up and move forward and pivot and change. And even when it's hard, how to push through, if I can show people what perseverance looks like, because for a period of time, I was not very perseverant. If I can help somebody in that space, that's why I'm here. Because so often in life, especially in business, we have some kind of goal. What's your three-year plan? What's your one-year run? What does it look like? And so many people want to hit a number. Hmm. For me, it's what do you do once you get there? For me, I always wanted to make a million dollars. And when I made a million dollars, guess what I did? I turned around because the money wasn't for me anyways. Is how can I use it to support the next people that are coming up the mountain behind me? If you look at Mount Everest, Mount Everest has these rungs that are left in the mountain already there why are they there because somebody climbed it first somebody got to that mountaintop first and they left the rungs there so that the next person up could have a little bit easier journey so for mm -hmm. me sharing my story if i'm able to walk through that valley and show you what it looks like and illuminate some steps for you that's why i'm here i love that that's that that feeling of being on a on a journey climbing the mountain and you reach out for the next handhold or you're or you're putting your foot down for the next foothold and it feels you you can feel the presence of someone else having been there. It's a little bit worn from other people having been there, worn in a way that actually helps you gain traction, worn in a way that helps to keep you on the mountain and on the path. Mm. And it's just it, it, not only that, not only does it help to stabilize you and continue you on your journey, but it also kind of guides you because you can see where others went before mm. and you can realize like, well, you know, maybe this, um, and now I'm just like, you know, building an analogy on the fly here, but I'm thinking hey, about like, so good. maybe this handhold was like for somebody with longer reach this one was for somebody with a shorter reach. They're on the same path. They got there more or less the same way, but slightly differently. And I can see how this person, like they have short arms like me. And so I need to be able to reach there and then put this one foot here and then, you know, move forward that way. You know, while other people might have different reaches, different lengths of arms, legs. I'm just like, I'm thinking about how, and I, I, you you kind of spoke to this as well too, that the, the, the specifics, the uniqueness of everyone's journey, even though they're on a very, it's very, it's very much the same path climbing the same mountain, looking for success and impact and growth and change and just, you know, delighting in living their life. Um, and how that looks the same for everybody and how that looks completely different for everybody at the same time. <laughs> and how 
stories like yours, the sharing of them and the elaboration on too. You don't just share the story. You're not just, you know, flopping it out there. It's actually, you go into depth and you really like, like you said, everything's on the table. And so people can really like interrogate it and like for themselves and reflect it back and like talk to you about it, obviously as a coach and really understand what their journey is going to look like and how your journey can not just inspire them, but also teach them about their own, which that's just, I, when I start to think about it and talk about it, I get, I almost get like a little bit of a tingle because it's, it's so powerful. It's, it's borderline magical the way that that feels where people can just learn more about themselves from learning about you. It's almost mm -hmm. weird to say it out loud. You're like, that can't be the way things work. Can it? So I feel a little selfish. It's like, nope, that's, ex that's exactly how you give back. <laughs> that's exactly how you help people. And I just, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're a part of it. <laughs> I'm glad you're here doing it because I, I love, I love the way you approach it. Thank you. I appreciate it so much again, because I, I've had those same experiences. There's people that I've listened to their story and I went, wow, they, I thought that I had it bad. And mm -hmm. then I listened to their story and I realized maybe it's not so bad. And there was a, a story of a girl who got left at a bus station and her mom had put acid in her eyes because she was using her to get handouts. And this was in India. And her mom just left her at a bus stop. And I went, okay, my life is not that bad. And then she gets adopted and she was sitting there thanking the, she, she was sitting there thanking God that she had been left at that bus station, sitting there and was excited that her life had went that way. And for me, as that gave me a very unique perspective to say, if she can say that after having acid poured into her eyes and being left at a bus stop and enjoying her life and being able to move forward and press through different situations, maybe I can too. Maybe my situation of being in a basement isn't as bad as I made it out to be at the time. And I love being able to just share authentically because of somebody, one person. I'm not trying to impact everyone. I want to be able to impact the one who is sitting there and they think that there's no one ever walked through it, that they're alone in their situation. If I can speak to that person and they say, maybe I'm not alone and it saves them one more day, they can push forward one mm. more day. That's what excites me to do what I do. Mm. I love that. It's that. The way you said that has got me saves, saving the day, like just save, save the day. And then you could save the next one. And then the next mm -hmm. one, cause it's like, yeah, you're it, that, that really sets. And obviously it kind of connects back to the whole superhero villain origin story thing. It's got me. <laughs> I mean, connecting things back all comic book style, but just like, just like taking it in those chunks, not trying to affect everybody or not trying to bring somebody from zero to hero or whatever that looks like for them in like in one coaching session or in one day, it's like save the one day and then save the next day and then save the next day. And before you know it, you will be a hero. <laughs> I just, I, I just, that, that just inspired, you inspired me on the fly. And so I just wanted to put that out there. It might need some, mm. some polishing to actually be, to be <laughs> of genuine value, but Okay. A little bit before we go, because I, I feel like yeah. I could just talk to you about your story all day. And I, I told you I would have this problem. I'm looking at the Zoom clock being like, all right, Kevin, the clock is ticking. <laughs> I could just talk with this guy for hours, but we're not going to do the five-hour marathon pod. I do want to give you a few minutes to talk about – I kind of – I, I two-part this question as well because I like to I like to kind of get into the nuts and bolts of people's coaching practices, how they go about their business essentially. Mm -hmm. Who do you coach and how do you coach them primarily? Like the who being – do you focus on a particular – type of individual or like, you know, age group, demographic, you know, corporate versus entrepreneur, like do you have a particular kind of person or people that you tend to work with more often um, or in, or in greater depth or breadth. And also how do you primarily, I say primarily, how do you coach them? Because obviously there's one-to-one -one coaching, there's group, group coaching and masterminds. There's like larger team coaching, there's corporate coaching, there's keynote speeches, there's book writing, there's all of the above. So Basically, I'm, I'm giving you like a few minutes to talk about all of that and then some. So who do you coach and how do you coach them that you want to speak to here in the moment? Yeah, so I coach pretty much, I would say to a certain degree, it's two different people, two different exact people, which is one is they are somebody who is newer in business, but they want to know where they're going to go. Because <laughs> again, is it is about that next step. And what that looks like is, yes, I have a virtual events company called Holoco. Yes, we have done e-commerce. Does it have to be either of those that I coach them on? No. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I want to be able to give back into that person who needs their next steps. I have mm -hmm. one client who is in Israel. So it is an international thing. And with her, is hers is much more niched into environments, how to, how to inspire people, how to help their environment speak to them when they work. So mm -hmm. for me, is I one-to-one -one coach her to be able, and she's older, I one to one coach her to be able to get her business off the ground. And that's typically through one-off sessions. 
Now I have another individual that there's going to be another one coming on. And then this individual in particular where he is one-to-one -one coaching, but he wants to know e-commerce. The one thing that I don't advertise that I always do is I am available. And what that means <laughs> is, and I feel like I can share this is that with this one client is he, he texts me one day and out of the blue and he said, Hey, I'm going through some pretty dark stuff right now. Can you just be here for me? And I said, absolutely. I'm here. What do you need? And he said, it, and he said, you're, I feel like you're the one person in my life that I can just come to. Hmm. And so for me is more than just practical. Here's your next steps. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's the tech behind it. Here's what it looks like is I want to speak into that person because helping them be a better person and be able to get outside of their own head is typically where the success they're looking for lives. The reason why you're in the position you're in is there's usually some kind of block that's in the way to keep you from going to that next level. So if I can identify that, help them work through that and identify that answer for themselves instead of me giving it to them, then I can give them the tech and the practical and they'll be able to run with it. So that's kind of the the nutshell of what that looks like. Hmm. I, I, love, I love that. It's, again, I'm getting like these little jumping off points where it's like, let's talk about this for a half an hour. Cause it's like that, that ability to like, to create and to hold space for someone. And I know that's, that's terminology gets yes. thrown around quite a bit. Um, but it's just so important because sometimes what people need is to be filled up. They're like, they have a gap that they need filled, a bridge they need built, something that is lacking that needs to be filled with, you know, system process, encouragement, you know, guidance, direction. And sometimes they just need a place to be that's mm -hmm. not in their own head yep. <laughs> and with, with no, with nothing else, without form and void, so to speak, and just kind of be there. And then once that space is held and allowed for, then things begin to like move and shift and change in ways that you might might not even be able to predict, let alone ask for. That's another thing too about being able to hold that space for people is it allows the next right question to emerge rather mm. than trying to craft it or create it or get your hands on it and shape it or just apply your 17 point strategy in a paste to everybody and let them figure it out for themselves. That's, that's really the, the dynamism and the real like next level impact that good coaching can and should have. And so I'm, once again, I'm finding myself praising your approach <laughs> and just repeating what you were saying. But again, it is spot on in my in my professional opinion. <laughs> Thank you. Again, I, I appreciate all of the, the kind regards because it comes from my heart. I didn't know yeah. I was doing it right. That's just where my heart lies. Like I'm, I thank you for that because I had no idea. It's not as if I went through, I went through a, a coaching certification program or I went and I was one-to-one -one mentored by Tony Robbins. Let's say I was not any of those things. <laughs> I, I just truly care about people. And the best way to care about people is, as you said, hold space. Here, what are they giving me? Because typically if they're going to give you surface level and then you dig a little deeper, find out where their real pain is. And once you find that real pain, you can identify it and work through it with them. But it's not, it's not copy and paste. No matter what anyone is trying to sell, no matter what anyone is trying to say, there is not a copy and paste system that's going to make you millions. There's not a copy and paste system that's going to give you a successful marriage or to be able to give you friendships because each person is unique. We're all unique. Kevin, you're an amazing human being, but you're not me and I'm not you. And that's what makes us unique and special. And that way we can speak to the people that are called to us. And that is where the magic really happens is when you can look at people as unique individuals and how do I work with this individual instead of thinking, here's my blanket statement for these blanket amount of people. And that's how they're all going to move forward. That's not true. Yeah. You can look the same, be the same age, do the same work and not be the same person. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather come to my relationships with, with questions than with answers, because then with yes. questions, you never know what might emerge, you know, two strangers meet and connect. And what comes out of that connection for each individual and also in the space between them for maybe others. It's like, you never know what next great thing could emerge. And I, I, I love, I love the continuing opportunity of that. It gets me excited. <laughs> Before I let you go, and I do have to let you go, mm -hmm. <laughs> because like I said, the clock is ticking, but um, I want to make sure that people who are listening know, and again, it's another two-parter where they can find out more about you, who you are, what you do, just kind of learn more about Holoco, about just, you know, Stephen Pemberton, and also where they can best connect with you. If there's a preferred social media, or if you just like, you know, email me anytime, here's my personal phone number, text me at two in the morning. I'm, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> but like, how can people best find out more about you and also best connect with you? So stephenpemberton.com has pretty much all that information. It has more about me. It has podcasts on there. It has what, where, like what Holoco is, 
what it looks like. The entire business is right there. To find out more about me, if you want to as well, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook are some of the best places. Those are also the best places to reach out to me, especially LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I'm mm -hmm. on there all the time. That's where a lot of my clientele come from. That's where a lot of my networking is done. So LinkedIn's big. Instagram is the other big one. But those are the best places to find me. Nice. Yeah, I find that find that LinkedIn especially, but also Instagram in a different way. They address really the full spectrum of relationship building. Like I, I can, I build different kinds of relationships on those platforms, even with the same people, but yeah, yep. LinkedIn's really upped its game in the last few years. And so yeah, I love, I love directing people there because it's, there's, I'll say this as politely and as, as succinctly as possible. <laughs> there's less noise there. There's still yes. noise and there's still, you know, stuff that happens that happens on social media platforms, but there's less noise there than there is in other places, which means I can get more signal there. I can get, yep. I can, I can really connect with people and tap into people there. So I love it. I kind of, I, you know, I kind of love you. Don't mean to drop the L word like that this soon into hey, our relationship, but I've loved love talking too. with you. It's, it's been, it really has been fantastic. And yeah, kind of like, I know I mentioned this because we've both been on a podcast with, uh, with coach Harlan, Harlan Hammock. And I remember mentioning that he kind of made my day slash made my week when I talked to him. And, you know, I'm, I, I, I think I can comfortably say the same for you. I feel like going outside and going for a walk and just kind of like taking a deep breath and doing some, doing some reflection. So thanks for sharing some time with me and sharing your story. Absolutely the same to you. Thank you so much for your sunny disposition. Thank you for <laughs> giving me the space to be open, to be vulnerable. And thank you. This is one that I'm going to hold near and dear to my heart. And it's it's actually a lot of things that you said without knowing it are things that I needed today, are things hmm. that I needed to to move myself forward, to move my business forward. So thank you. Hmm. Oh, you're welcome. And my pleasure. Like I'm your, your acknowledgement of a gift received is also a gift given. I, I'm feeling hmm. it too. So Shoot. Well, on that, I can't end it on any better note than that. So thank you, Stephen. Thank you to the audience for listening. I hope you got just a, at least a fraction of the sunshine that we're getting from this conversation, because if you did, your day is already brighter. And we will be grateful and anticipating talking to you again here in this space very, very soon.